Good luck flying the drone today, huh? Recently here, I got something in the mail. It says something about electoral reform, something about proportional representation. I was like, oh no, I gotta read all this politics stuff later on, I guess. But the first thing I read about this here today says, ex-gender identity now recognized on BCIDs. Government issued identification now offer male, female, and ex under gender fields. It's like, how does that work? Like in terms of identifying your gender in that situation in various places. Like for things, let's just say like a contest, how would you categorize yourself in that case? Let's just say something that says it's male only or female only. Does an X gender technically make you either or? Like you can be whichever one you wish or would that be just itself? Like no, you'd have to be the, the X gender to qualify for something that has to be X gender related. Or at the same time, how would you actually go about saying, okay, this person is an X gender, or is it just a matter of, like, let's say, if a person like myself says, I want to be identified as X gender, is that all basically the person needs to do? Well, it's kind of interesting, anyways. I'm just kind of curious how it actually works for just the stuff that we have nowadays in terms of categorization. I think the only dispute topic I've ever heard of here in terms of gender were related to bathrooms, like saying the X gender should have their own bathroom as opposed to just male and females. Funny enough, one of my friends was telling me he does services for various buildings and he said in the Microsoft building apparently there's a gender neutral washroom like male or female, you can actually just go in there. Um, that's probably the way it's going to be later on in the future. I guess that'll make stuff like this less confusing too. I guess the story that caught my attention the most today was a follow-up. Remember that story of the person in the north flying a drone? They said it was near an airport all that. They apparently warned him three times that flying a drone is illegal there, yet he denied it. Well, it says here, Northwest Territory man becomes first convicted under criminal code for unsafe drone use. Tofik Chamis fined 3K, sentenced to five days in jail. A Northwest Territories judge has reluctantly accepted a plea bargain for a man who repeatedly lied to police and flew a drone in airspace used by planes taking off and landing at the Yellowknife Airport. It marks the first time somebody has been convicted under the criminal code of dangerous operations of an aircraft as a result of illegally flying a drone, according to RCMP. And apparently the judge commented saying, even taking into account the guilty pleas, I don't find that any of the sentences suggested are adequate. Although based on this and the headline, people might get a little confused whether or not he went to jail for flying the drone. But it says here he was fined $3,000 and five days in jail the fine was for illegally flying a drone. The jail time was for three convictions, obstruction driving while disqualified and breaching bail conditions by failing to report to probation officer. So to my knowledge, this guy was driving without a license too or something like that. So I think according to this anyways, that's what the jail time was for. It wasn't for the flying the drone. She didn't think the sentence was enough to deter the 22 year old from committing more offenses. She had to accept it because the Supreme Court of Canada has established that sentences suggested by both the Crown and defense and plea bargains can only be rejected if the sentence would cause people to lose confidence in the justice system. Out of curiosity too, since you guys mentioned about it, I tried to look at the map of these zones and stuff like that just to see how strict or crazy it is within that area and as you can see here basically the whole zone is pretty much a no fly zone like for the drones and stuff like that you pretty much can't fly anywhere and since it is far north i'll just look at the map you gotta go really east it doesn't even look like there's roads or anything like that because funny enough even if you wanted to fly safe like let's just say at the very tip of the city you want to fly away to the further east area where there's nothing there you can't even do that technically like taking off and all that so it makes you wonder, is it too strict in that sense? Like if the guy just wanted to go over there, should they be allowed to do that like with their drone? Or do you say, no, you have to physically go drive there for whatever that is, like two hours or whatever, and then start your flight. But in a nutshell for the drone, basically it says here, 22 year old flying a Phantom 4 Pro, got three warnings, pleaded ignorance at first. Is that justified for the penalty? Is it too harsh? Overall, I would say, I don't know, it really depends how you're flying it and like what part of the city he was into. Because I would be inclined to say with the current regulation, like the 90 meters and stuff, it was doing it like, I don't know, in the middle of the park or something like that. And there's nothing there. You just want to do like a pan, why not? If he was flying into the actual airport and stuff, it's a little different, but it doesn't sound like it's the case at this moment. 
Although an interesting story I remember reading before in terms of crime and tech, I remember before there was a situation where apparently there was these people that hacked into a site or something like that, okay? They broke into it and since the internet was still just kind of new, it was basically a big deal. People going, oh my god, people hacking into things, like just the idea of breaking into a bank, stealing everybody's data. So with that crime, it was something along the lines of the judge, they weren't really tech savvy of course, so because of the hysteria and stuff like that, they ended up getting something like, I don't know, 30 years in prison, something ridiculous, $200,000 or whatever, fine. But then there was another case where someone actually murdered somebody, like something along that lines, and they got like maybe 15 years and a less stiff sentence. So it makes you wonder like, what? The guy hacked into something, got that crazy of a, you know, punishment? And it wasn't like a corporation or something like that. It was just like some kind of like small business or something like that. So in that case, it was too much hysteria with the tech. So it makes you wonder like for the drones, like in this case, do you think it was appropriate, like his punishment? What the heck? I was like, why is there a person right in the middle of the water there? I was like, wow. Lots of people like fishing in the pouring rain, huh? Alright, it's definitely the archive for today. Alright, see you guys later.